Soft opening, and I'm like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's a soft <laughs> opening. Right. It's always a soft Stupid. opening. Stupid. Yeah. Tonight we drink from the bottle. Uh, you know, every time someone mentions tequila, I always think of that really bad joke, and I'm not going to tell the whole joke. <laughs> but always the punchline. Tonight we drink from the bottle. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I could, but I'm not going to. Anyway, so how are you? Hi, Doc. Speaking of tequila, good to see you. Good. This is not tequila. This is actually just pure water. Agua. 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 Pure water. Hi, Lizzie. So the Doc was at uh, the Doc did this thing. Went down to Cancun and hung out with you know his wife and another couple, and they got crazy with the cheese whiz. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> got crazy with the cheese whiz. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. It was interesting. It was. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was kind of my oldest friend. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen him in a, in a while. Mm-hmm. I haven't spent nearly that much time with him since God knows when. Probably won again. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, there we, no, it was fine. Um, <clears throat> Thoroughly enjoyed it. At Cancun is a marvelous town to visit. They really know how to uh, put on the hospitality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've hour heard and that. F- yeah, hour and 40 minutes from, from Orlando. By plane, of course. By plane. Well, if you, if you can drive, you can take the tunnel. You want to run it? Yeah, no, you take the tunnel, <laughs> the, the tunnel from Key West to, to, to Cancun. Yeah, so it's a it's well worth doing. Highly recommend it. Go to the all what they call these uh, uh, all inclusive resorts. There are mm-hmm. many of them there to choose from, and you too can party like Dr. Dave. What party like a rock star? Party like rock a rock star. star. Were there any rock stars there on the beaches of? Probably, Acapulco? I didn't go to the beach. Oh, so no, yeah. never. Oh, that's right. You stayed inclusive in the resort. You betcha. Very, very close and inclusive. Yeah, it's one of those kinds of things. Why get sand in places you don't want to mention? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Stay out the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> don't get bitten there either. Yeah, right. I had a guy who got really nibbled bad. in the middle of the night. You know, that prostate problem where I have to go pee and munch right on the <laughs> right on. sack. Yep. Ew, I hate when that happens. Snake in the bowl. <laughs> Just better than the boys dropping in the bowl. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, yeah. You keep your hands covered on that thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Live from the Connections Studio Suites, it's Connections. Connections. Connections is relationship radio. Well, hello again. You found the Connection Show. I am Melissa Fox. Hashtag Lizzie said what is to my right? What's That's up? That's me, boy. It is you. And to my left, Dr. David Klein. Hola. Did you just nod for the radio? I love I when you do that. Well, it's it's part of my, my it's part of my persona. It People is can persona. feel me nod. Excuse you me? don't have to hear it. You can, I don't you feel, can your nod. feel my <laughs> nod. <laughs> feel my nod. <laughs> Sounds pretty vulgar, doesn't it? Is, it? it sounds a little uh, bit feel vulgar. My nod. So no <laughs> feeling of your nod tonight. Okay, actually, let's talk a little more about the uh, more ocular in this. Oh, <laughs> yes. Here's looking at you, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you did. Here's there. not looking at you, you yeah, mean. Right. And yeah, we're going to talk about the eyes today. Immacular, de- macular degeneration. Macular, macular degeneration. degeneration. We'll talk about diabetic retinopathy. We're going to talk about... Whatever, whatever you guys want to talk about. Mm, we can find eyeballs. a reason in a week. Yeah, but essentially what I want to talk about are very sensitive organs called eyeballs. Your eyeballs. Okay, your eyeballs. And so why do I care about eyeballs? Why do I care at all? They're the window to the world. They're dude. the window to your soul. Mm. Oh. Okay, so one of the things that, that the doctors enjoy about eyeballs, <laughs> okay, is the fact that it gives you a look at what the vasculature is doing in the brain. Mm-hmm. It gives you a general idea of what health is, you know, this person entertains. So to some that. extent, okay, you get the same kind of information that you get from a person as you do by looking at a horse in the mouth. So why do people look at horses in mouth when they go to buy them? See if their they teeth are rotting. rotting. See what kind of shape well. their teeth are in because it t- gives you a general idea of the age of the horse, at, which it will very quickly, but also the general health. 
So when you're looking in people's eyes, look at me in the eyes when you say that. Mm. It's a big deal with regards to communication. So 70% of communication between individuals is not auditory. In, yeah. in spite of the fact that we're speaking on the radio and most people listening to this can't hear. Like they can't hear me. They can't see me right now. So it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. So radio is a much more interesting medium in terms of broadcast than television. Sure. For that reason. You know, all you have to do is look pretty, you know, and have a, have a short... Uh, well, nowadays, it's all about the zabatos, too. That, yeah, there you go. The weather women are like 10 feet tall, and they show their shoes, and their hair is like this beautiful swirl that you can't really maintain in Florida. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah well, that's because they, they, as long as the studio is well air-conditioned, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So here we sit in a radio studio trying to entertain, educate, and otherwise engage people by the auditory medium. So what you do is you have to be very, very careful with regards to voice modulation, assonance, consonance, uh, elements of poetry and poetics. Close. Poetry and poetics. That's the difference between a good speaker, a good broadcaster, and somebody who really doesn't get it or get uh, it done. I thought it was ebb and flow. Ebb and flow is the one way to look at it. But it's music. It's all music. Well, everything is It's music. timing, timber, math tempo. Is music. music is math. Yeah. It's just wildly cool, actually. It's true so here music. we are. Don't you laugh? Just it is cool. So here we are. We're going to try to, to engage you and to try to commit you to taking better care of your health. That's what this is all about. Is it? Because I thought maybe if I just tease, hey, we're talking about balls tonight. That, that would work. People would pay attention. Jersey Shore, there it works every time. Every time. But for, you know, for the eyes, who cares about their eyes until you start to lose them? Okay. And that's really the issue. So individuals True. with diabetes, to include what we now lovingly refer to as pre-diabetes, Please. which is also a lot like pre-pregnancy. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. Either you're diabetic or you aren't. You got it. <laughs> the eyes begin to degenerate. Nailed her. So what are you going to do? Wait, <laughs> wait until you're nearly blind. Wait until you've lost eyesight that can't be restored. Okay? Or do you start dealing with health issues while you still can and while it doesn't cost very much to do it? Mm. Very, very simple, very straightforward. It's a matter of economics. You know, people are told as children, save your money when you're young. Why? Okay, because it has a tendency to grow over time. Do we? Time? No. No, they don't. Okay, (laughs) people have a tendency to ignore the wisdom of the ages. Wisdom of the ages here, okay, is going to tell you that you only have two eyes, and you can't replace them. New old stock eyes don't work. In fact, you know, it isn't any good. Replacing a lens is a second best effort. So what we need to do is look at the system, look at the operations, and look at your goals, and try to keep your eyeballs attached to you and make sure that they work as they should. Now, eyes do degenerate over time. They will, like any other wear part in the body. But you, if as an individual, as an overachiever, can s- just speed this process up tremendously by doing certain things that we'll discuss quickly, one of which is to drink a lot of alcohol. That's, that not, only, not only would that fry your brain, but it'll do a job on your eyes. Do it. So, uh, smoking tobacco. Marvelous if you want to cost your vision. Hmm. Because the small vessels in the brain, the small vessels elsewhere in your body, skin to, you know, including, um, will start to constrict. And that ages the tissues that the, vus- the blood vessels are supposed to nourish. Hmm. So now that I've, I've, I've complained to you enough about bad habits, <laughs> okay, things that you're probably not going to fix. You're not going to care until it's too late. What are the other things you can do? You need to be very careful about your diet. This is the other thing that people don't pay attention to. They look at that that plate of fries. Man, that tastes pretty good. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the salt is addictive, the grease is addictive, and the carbohydrates are addictive. So why not just do a couple lines of something nasty than to do a plate of fries? It's probably better for you. So why do saturated fats tear up the eyeballs? Because it tears up the vasculature leading to macular degeneration and other sorts of issues. Mm. Diabetic neuropathy, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic uh, lenticular, that's lens issues, all are, you know, happen as a result of poor diabetic control, poor blood sugar. Poor, you know, in your case, maybe you'd look at A1Cs as if that told you something. It's, it's really a late finding. Once you start to notice it there, there's little that you can do to undo the damage that's been done. So what you try to do is to convince people to be proactive and to understand that as we get older, and I mean over the age of 20 to 25, the body starts to change. And you need to adapt to it. You need to change your habits. Just because you got away with something when you were 16 doesn't mean that now that you're 26, 36, 46, or 66, that it's going to make any uh, sense to, to think about it that way. So macular degeneration, well, that's a disease of old people. Let me put it to you this way. You don't see the disease there until people are in their 60s as a general rule. Mm-hmm. 
and then the fun begins. Hmm. Okay, if you think it was a lot of fun waiting when you were 16 to, to, to get to drive, imagine going 50 years driving and then somebody telling you that you can't drive anymore because you have macular degeneration. Yeah, that's what... That's That'd what, be a real well, bummer. Well, that was with my dad, but my dad is actually the one who decided that he was starting to have problems seeing... Yeah, before so he, he killed somebody. Yeah, that was the thing. So, you know, he, he, he gave... He actually restricted his license and of all people, I'm like, my dad... Dad? Yeah, your dad. Your dad. I, I common sense. Met your dad. He's a, isn't a good guy, and he figured it out. He <laughs> did, he didn't want to wipe some young family out because he couldn't see well. True. Yeah, my my dad, you know, passed away in, in his nineties. He was always a lousy driver. Okay, <laughs> I mean, it didn't matter. His eyes weren't that great. They weren't right. that bad. But he was a terrible driver. Just consistently bad. No, so I mean, any, anybody that can that consistently go the wrong mm-hmm. way down a, a, an interstate. Oh, okay, you got a problem. Guy. Yeah, and he didn't he didn't drink. He just couldn't. He just didn't understand. He thought those street signs were just suggestions okay <laughs> do not enter unless you're milk okay yeah. <laughs> so so macular degeneration is not just a, a disease that you need to concern yourself because somebody in your family may have had it or may not have had it mm-hmm. you need to look at what it takes to start these disease process uh processes and to prevent them so macular degeneration is an interesting disease whereby the center of the optic nerve as it hits the back of the eye starts to break down it degenerates it falls apart the blood vessels start to leak. Okay, and this is the key The key here. It Leaky starts to leak. Vessels. They leak. And the garbage that leaks out is the same garbage that's inside the serum or the, the liquid part of the blood, right? Mm-hmm. So if you have high levels of, of triglycerides, if you have high levels of saturated fats in your diet, what do you suppose is going to get deposited behind the eye? Where it's very, very sensitive to these things. Okay. So it's kind of like throwing sand into, into your carburetor or your, your you know, fuel tank. injectors sure. these days and expecting good things to happen. Mm. Okay, because it, it will not happen. You're going to score your cylinders. You're going to trash your valves. You may end up damaging your, your engine little by little. In this case, that's exactly what happens. Mm. So it really with, has to do with your, your diet. It, ha- it has most, most of it has to do with diet. Because diet is what seems to trigger the development of diabetes to begin with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see macular degeneration far more commonly in diabetics than in pre-diabetics than anybody else. Hmm. That's where you're going to see it. You'll find it in individuals with hypertension, high blood pressure. You know, why? Okay, because something caused the blood pressure to go up. It just doesn't happen on its own. Uh, It it is a symptom of something else going on. Well, it's definitely a symptom. Symptom. Okay, so... When we come back, we're going to talk more about your eyeballs. I'm just trying to keep it interesting. In your eyes, Right. <laughs> Missed it completely. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's Connections, Relationship Radio with a twist. Yeah, definitely. Connections is Relationship Radio. You're listening to Connections. Get ready. I think I hear something. Man, I wish I was deaf. <laughs> Sir, do you know where I pulled yeah. you over? Certainly not for operating an illegal pirate radio station. No, we're legal. Mostly. Yeah, mostly, you know, you know, barely. But uh, anyway, welcome back. Uh, Melissa Fox, Dr. David Klein, and my bud, hashtag Lizzie, said Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> I get more attention when I wear Bucky shirts than I do any other shirt. That's because they're tighter than the other yeah, shirts. Yeah, I was going to say it's because <laughs> to where the beaver teeth is. Yeah, you think? Right yeah, there. Maybe. Well, it's funny because I actually. Well, somebody's teeth got to be you there. You see the black mark below Bucky's? Uh-uh. Well, that's a permanent marker. So um, I wore it the other day <laughs> and I walked up to her and I was like, hey, I saw a friend of mine. And she started, she's like, hey, you got some on your shirt. And I was like, that's all it took for you to touch me on I'm the touch shirt. Touch my gosh. <laughs> you usually have to I'm buy her mark- a drink or two. Yeah, right? I'm like, well, almost a marker. Nice to her. Marker Put spots all over my shirt. <laughs> Anywhere. Hey, you got something on your shirt. I, hey. I will in a second. Yeah. <laughs> hey, give me that pen. So anyway, we're talking about macular degeneration, the eyeballs. You know, it's kind of weird it, when uh, when we first started out, they did, uh, they being the people that existed back and did not want to admit that our eyes could be poor, that our sight, everything was perfect. God created us perfectly. And so they did not want the priest and the, you know, the religious folks did not want to acknowledge it. They just walk into walls and stuff and rather than say there's something wrong with the body. When was this, 1990? Yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but 
then they finally County. acknowledge <laughs> the fact that we are, you know, not, we are imperfect. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then you sort of, you know, Ben Franklin sort of make bifocals and things like that. Nice. So, yes. But before then, they didn't, no one wanted to acknowledge that, that we weren't absolutely a perfect vessel. Right. Yeah. So again, we just walk into things. Here. Well, see, I've noticed like this year, I wear my reading glasses more than I ever have. Because you've gotten older. In a, in a yeah, year? That yeah, well, yeah. every year you get a little older. Age. Okay, yeah. eyeglasses. Yes. Okay, so what is it about getting older that results in having to wear reading glasses? It's called presbyopia. What? It occurs generally when you approach the age of 40, sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later, but 40 years of age. Oh, no. What happens is the, the uh, eyes have, an, a, let's say, a lessened ability to accommodate, which is what the word's called, um, with regards to changing the lenticular or lenses uh, diopter. So oh. in other words, you have to make it harder and harder and harder to see things you closer to bigger your... Bigger words. Could you use bigger words? Bigger words? It means you can't <laughs> see things up close. So, hey, Omer, you can't it's... see things up close because you're 40 years old. That's why you have a hard time going Thank to the bathroom. Thank you, Dr. Day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I was, yeah, was, just... to, I was Googling Lizzie everything was you were glazed, saying. Lizzie was glazing and Googling. No. Like, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> my that's my glasses. language. It's a, it'd be like... It's a, you know, it's again, a, laypersons here. Yes. Laypersons on deck. Yes. Well, so, it just yeah, simply so means you can't see things up close. So I have a problem focusing at, you know, okay. as I'm getting older. But, like, I can see stuff like a thousand miles away and I can it's read It's called stuff. far vision. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So things things that are further away don't rely on the lens to work. You can take the lenses out and see things distantly. Hmm. Okay. okay. It, the lens is really there to, to deal with things up close and personal. Hmm. So the lens gets a little harder as you get older, hmm. becomes less flexible, and thereby more difficult for it to bunch up, let's say. It so sounds it, like most of us get but what's harder true of and, less, and less say, like, flexible as we get there, older. Well, why would it be any different? So, but, right. Well, what can you do as an individual to, yes. make, to make that go faster? No, what? Uh, ah, no. what? what do you know? That leads, that leads to another problem okay, with sunny Florida. We discussed this on okay. Sunday. That's Too damn bright. Too bright. And what is it about the, the brightness, the sun? It goes you know, right to the back of your head. It goes oh. right to the lens, <laughs> damaging the lens, calling... Uh, uh, causing uh, senile cataracts. Ultraviolet light triggers this. And if you're diabetic, it gets going even faster. Senile cataracts. Cataracts of the elderly. I hate my uh, cataracts ultra, being senile. Ultraviolet <laughs> light. So how do you how do you, how do you uh, minimize that? How do you deal with it? How do you prevent it? Wear sunglasses. Sunglasses. How tough is that? Hello. So you too See? can look like a, a movie star. You wear them outside so you don't squint. All right, okay, so if you don't squint, you don't get crow's feet. Okay, you start looking younger. So let's start with that. But it also helps prevent cataracts. My, it helps I, prevent a lot now, of problems. Now, my whole life, I've always had to wear sunglasses, besides the fact that we live in the state of Florida. But is it true that people with blue eyes, that they're more sensitive to light? light? Eyes. Somebody Perhaps. told me that. And I'm like, more. it would make sense for me personally. because but Dave, I've heard eyes. that more light gets to the back of the eye, which causes a problem Perhaps. with the light. There's, there's, there may be a little bit to that. But for the most part, the, the light that gets to the back of the eye goes through a very, very narrow channel. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And it doesn't include the iris. Okay, so it, it goes through the pupil, which is black. You, that's what you typically see. Mm. It goes straight back. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But the, the iris, the different colors, may be an indication of what the pigment looks like behind the, the, the retina. Okay. So if, you have, if you're an albino, it's a great example of somebody that's going to have a difficult time red with bright eye. light. Hmm. Their eyes are red, uh, red and white. Okay, mine are blue. So I guess that, that, that's, that's patriotic in some way. That's, that's beautiful. But... They, you know, albinos, individuals that, that lack melanin, uh, melanin mm. they have a tendency to have difficulties with light like that. Oh. So in the state of Florida, you need to be wearing eyeglasses. You need to be wearing sunglasses that give you protection from ultraviolet light. In fact, it's the law in Florida that the lenses are coated in such a manner as to protect you. So where do we get into trouble? We get into trouble with out-of-staters coming here wearing sunglasses that may have come from the sunny state of Flor- of uh, New York, right? <laughs> Where they don't, re- they don't require <laughs> sunglasses with, with 400 rating to be sold on the, on the street. Right. Here you have to have proper eyewear or you're done. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So individuals coming from elsewhere are the ones that are at greatest risk. People from right here know, oh, if I'm going to go out on the boat, I'd better bring two or three pairs of sunglasses yes. in case I drink and drop the, you know, one or two pairs. <laughs> you know, one on or two one. pairs go in the, in, in the drink. So, yeah, you, this is what you have to do. So I took a vacation to Cancun. I took three pairs of sunglasses with me. Why? Because I wasn't going to ruin my annual vacation by losing a pair of sunglasses. Hmm. Just the way it works. You know, do you run the risk of somebody stealing them? I guess you might. But even at that, it's better than losing a pair and not having a, a, a 
Proper way to enjoy the, yeah, yeah, enjoy yourself. So tinting your, your, your car is another one. Yes. You have to do this in the state. If you don't do it, you're mm-hmm. going to get into trouble. However, you can get into trouble by over tinting it. Mm-hmm. So those of you from New Jersey, you need to not make it look like something off of Jersey Shore with a mm-hmm. very, very dark or somebody's going to give you a Ooh, ticket. Good. So you'll be paying to put it on your car. You'll be ta- paying to take it off. and You'll be paying a fine to boot. So yes, yeah. and, and don't insult the guy with the broad uh, cowboy looking uh, state trooper hat. They do not mm-hmm. take a joke. They're not fans of that. They are not. Mm-hmm. They yeah, don't like it. Our niece, one of our niece moved here to Florida in May her car we didn't have her car uh, here for less than two days and we had it at the shop and had the windows tinted immediately for you her because oh, yeah. she's from Seattle she's from the west coast she's not used to that and we're just like and she already has eye problems well, they, were they, were they thought that the marijuana was going to protect her car windows <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah so she already has you know some sensitivity with her eyes so I was like yeah we're getting your windows tinted immediately you have to do it and so you know Getting your windows tinted uh, at your car, you don't have to take it to the dealer to do it. There are all mm-hmm. kinds of people that work out of their that work is. out of their trucks to do that, and it, it, it's not a bad thing. It's, mm-hmm. It supports the economy and some of these people that can't get other jobs. Right. So, hmm. di- let's 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 flip back to diabetes, diabetes. okay? Because macular degeneration is something that seems rather uh, arcane. It seems a, a little bit out unlikely that somebody might develop this. Yes, I don't know anybody that has macular degeneration. Not, not in the United Brilliant. States. Brilliant. Yeah, macular de- degeneration really? is a big deal. So what else are we looking at? Diabetes. So modest. Now we're talking not, gee, my blood sugar is 120. My doctor wants to get down to 100. You start developing diabetic retinopathy when the blood sugar hits about 85 or 86. Mm. Okay, and that's not outside the normal range, just so, just so you know. Yeah. So prediabetes will lead to diabetic uh, eye disease. And there are several different types of diabetic eye disease. It's not just retinopathy, but you have lenticular or lens issues. You may end up having problems with glaucoma that can result. Lots of problems with the eyes in diabetics. Pressure. So stuff like what that. do you need to look at? And so you need to get on your family docs for this one. Or if, if, you're, if, you know, if you're one of those individuals out there that has an endocrinologist for, for a family doc. Not the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no. So what you need to do is have them double check your insulin levels as well as your A1C and blood sugar. You do all three simultaneously and it will tell you how you're doing. So, well, you know, you need to be fasting to do X, Y, and Z. Actually, you don't. Okay. If you get an insulin and blood sugar simultaneously, it'll tell you every bit of what you need to know about your individual tolerance for sugar. But you want to get your insulin level below 10. You want to get your A1C below 5.5 and that blood sugar should be below 85. Any other number than that, you are going to see degeneration and you won't be seeing me for all that long. <laughs> Connections airs locally on News Radio WFLA Orlando Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. And of course, the podcasts are available on any podcast app. Search Connections. Connections is Relationship Radio. Seriously? It's all good. <laughs> oh, then here we go. They just dropped the ball. Ow. Hey now, baby. Hello. Let's keep it real here. Idle hands spend time at the genitals. It's true. And you know how much God Why is there now? We fought say. a whole war with England over there. And hand check. <laughs> <laughs> you always saw one of mine. I know. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, uh, Connections Relationship Radio with the Twist. Dr. David Klein is with us tonight. We're talking about your eyeballs, uh, macular degeneration in particular. Uh, you were on a diabetic slant when we went to, to the break. Lizzie is here as well. Hi, Lizzie. Good to see what you. Is up? Now, isn't smoking contribute to... Uh, well, it messes your capillaries. It messes everything up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, can, you can associate smoking with just about every disease that there is. Disease and pestilence. Mm. You know, I mean, you could you could blame smoking on the last election if you chose to. Pestilence. And probably be correct. Blame it on Trump. Yeah. Hey, why not? Ooh, uh, I like that. Let's right. Go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when we when we went to break, um, the diabetic eye, the, that I mean, the pressure that must be. I, you know, I see people walking down the street and their eyes are bulging out of their head, and I'm like. There's a problem here. You think? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. My my eyes are bulging. Why do you suppose that happens? You don't see anybody's hands around their throat. That could do it. You don't no, see only it. in the cartoons. You don't see. You don't see a, a garrote <laughs> yeah. titan. But there's there. Yeah, there's something called thyroid eye disease, uh. which you will see. They will see. 
And what happens is a dis, um, physical finding called exophthalmos occurs. Okay, now that's a good one for, for uh, Scrabble, exophthalmos. exophthalmos. And what this means is that your eyes are sticking out. So, you know, if you can come up with a, with a, <laughs> a multi-syllabic yeah, multi <laughs> yeah. word like that, you can charge your patients more. See? So I have people coming in all the time. So what's wrong with you? My doctor says I've got exophthalmos. You know, no. Popeyes. Okay, it's a physical finding. It's not a disease. <laughs> However... Does it cause problems? The answer is yes. But so thyroid eye disease occurs in individuals with something called Graves' disease. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to ask about that. That's what occurs. Graves' thought, disease. Because usually I can, I, can, I can pick someone out whenever I know that they've got Graves' disease just does, by well, their here's, eyes. Well, sort of. Okay. You know, is it, that painful? It looks like, like for the eyes. It doesn't feel good. It's okay. Be, it looks like it. pressure that's forced. Well, mm. the, eyes, the eyes dry out. They cause all kinds of problems. Typically mm. when people suffer with this, they'll have red eyes. Mm -hmm. they're, they'll see, you'll see a redness or an injection all the way around. It, mm -hmm. but it's autoimmune disorder and it hits the tissues behind the eyes which then hypertrophy pushing the eyeballs outward and so there's some things that you can do to treat that okay oddly enough but frankly it's not all that common graves disease occurs very very rarely relative to hypothyroidism so one third of the people listening right now are either hypothyroid being treated for hypothyroidism or somebody in their household has hypothyroidism on the other hand how many people do I know? How many patients have I seen with Graves' disease? The answer is, in my practice right now, it's, I guess, 15,000 people, is three. So Graves' disease itself is very unusual. Ah. Now, how do you pick it up? Okay, usually you pick it up when, when people are going completely out of their minds. Their T3 and T4 levels are very, very high. Tachycardia, their temperature goes up. It becomes fairly simple to find these people. Hmm. Do they get misdiagnosed? The answer is yes, very, very frequently yeah. until somebody goes, hey, wait a second, this person is not manic. They have another problem. So for $15 blood test, you can figure that out. Hmm. So exophthalmos is, is a very interesting problem occurring in Graves' disease. So if frequently I have people coming in where I say, okay, well, you have hypothyroidism. Is that a disorder of thyroid? Yes. Well, what about my eyes? Are my eyes going to start to bulge? The answer is no. No, it's not Graves' disease. Graves' disease is very, very different. So, and how do you treat it? There's, I'm not going to bore people with the details on that one, but it is one of my favorite problems. But you go ahead and you actually treat this hyperthyroidism by using thyroid medicine. Ah. You hit them with more Synthroid. Why? Because Synthroid is an, is an anti-metabolite. It actually slows down metabolism. Ah. It's one, one of my favorite reasons for not using it. So, ah. so when individuals have Graves' disease, that's how you go about it. So with regards to metabolic diseases that influence or damage the eyes, autoimmune disorders by and large will have ocular findings. So if you, if you were in medical school and you're sitting through one of those dull classes with dermatologists put on, okay, okay, I mean, I, honestly, I got some of my best, most memorable naps during those, those lectures. I missed some good material, I got to tell you, and I've suffered it ever since. But autoimmune diseases, yeah, autoimmune diseases almost all have ocular findings. It makes sense. Yeah, it does. And so you will, you'll find it. The problem is, is that many of the eye docs don't study this. Okay? I'm here, to, I'm here to, to fix cataracts. That's all I'm going to do. I'm here to do LASIK. That's all I'm going to do. Yeah, if, if your retina is a problem, we send you to a retinologist because they're dull. You know, I mean, it's so. There's always an underlying situation. I just don't get how some of these doctors are just like putting well, like a lick it, stick it, stamp on it and going, yeah, way, that's it. But you know, yeah. that's true in automobile mechanics. It's true with everything. Okay? Most People Waste. in the professions get by with the least effort. They give it the very, their very, very best minimum wage effort. Makes mm. sense. Okay, because that's that's and you can get away with it. Most people don't any different, don't know differently, and so consequently it moves on. Drives me crazy. One of the many reasons I do what I do right now. Okay, you know I could have retired decades ago. Why am I doing care. this? Because I yeah, because I because you drive yourself crazy. Drive myself crazy. Well, I am half nuts anyway. <laughs> well, so it takes but one it's cr it, it but Hi. what irritates me to no end, okay, <laughs> is the unwillingness of, of many medical professionals, people that I many people I know and like, to really put in the extra effort. Well, I've already I've already studied enough. I've heard that. Mm -mm. Okay, I've already mm -mm. I've already studied enough. No, there's well, always no, stuff there's, there's to learn. always really cool stuff to learn. I had a neat patient today. I had a lot of neat patients today. So if I, if I don't mention you in this, it's because I didn't mean to. But yeah, so, so this gal came in. She was the second person of the day with photosensitivity huh. reaction. She is, this is a reaction to a medication or in her case, a food stuff she's taking. So she's got this rash, miserable rash over her whole body. So she's been to what, two, maybe three dermatologists where they've told her she's had everything but, but leprosy. And 
So I look at this thing, and it's only hitting areas that are, that are exposed to the sun. Mm-hmm. So it's from the from the from the short line down, and from the from the shirt sleeves down. Okay, it's on her chest, and it's on her back. And so the question with her, because she's not taking any medications in spite of her age, she's over seventy. More than likely, it's due to a food stuff causing photosensitivity. Oh, very interesting problem. So I told her, I said, look, I said I can talk about the medicines all day long. But I really don't know about foods that cause photosensitivity. I will promise you one thing. By tonight or tomorrow morning, I, I will learn. know. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> you know? Just, so what do you suppose I'm going to be doing when we're yeah, off air tonight? Research. I'll be studying you know, food-borne or food-induced photosensitivity reactions because hmm. I, I should know this. They do exist. They obviously. do exist. Hmm. Yeah. And so if this gal came in and traveled a distance to see me, I am going to figure it out. See, that's what he does. He doesn't like to worry about treating symptoms. He actually wants to figure, well, figure out, out what what's the wrong. causes yeah, and straighten so what are you gonna do? Oh, and she goes, well, they gave me a steroid cream. And I said, let me oh. guess. Let me oh. guess. It made it worse, right? She goes, well, yeah. I said, you know why it made you worse? It irritated it. No, 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 right? no. Because with, with photosensitivity reactions, okay, these, this type of issue, when you use steroid creams to settle it down, steroid creams typically contain methylparabens and PABA. And so that will actually further sensitize the skin to the, to the sun. So it's like throwing gasoline on a, on a, right. on a barbecue grill and wonder why you just fry it <laughs> off your eyebrows. Iggy is uh, watching us oh, on, Iggy. on Facebook. Hey, Ig. Ignacio. Uh, he, he had asked a question we just talked about, the thyroid eye disease. But then he also wanted to know if MS causes you to lose your vision. It can. I would think so. With the- One of the first, actually, Iggy, good job. He, he, he always comes up with, with something interesting. He, mm-hmm. was, yeah, he ran into him in the office today. He said, I'm the Iggy. I went, oh, okay. You're Iggy. You're Iggy. Oh. Yeah, I should have known, but I didn't. No, no. You never put the, the answer, right face to never. the no. So, no. so as it turns out, yes, one of the first first symptoms of MS is double vision. Yeah. Okay? So if, you, if you've got MS, you're told you might have MS, and you don't have double vision, it's, it's less likely. You know, MS is one of those kinds of things and like the, Lyme's disease. Oh, yeah, you have Lyme's disease. Prove it. Is okay? the double vision because the muscles are... Root- it's, the du- it's because the muscles weaken a little bit. The nerves to the, what are called EOMs, the extraocular muscles, tend to uh, diminish in, in their strength, and you start to develop uh, divergent strabismus, or another, sometimes known as double vision. Your eyes wander. That's double vision. Wanda Thank eyes. You. I they wander. <laughs> so they wander. Looking over here. But then you can end up with things like optic neuritis, which will cause your vision fairly quickly. So with patients with MS, one of the things I do, so if there's anybody listening with MS, have them do what's called a pregnenolone level. Draw your blood, hormone pregnenolone. Not, pre, okay. pre, not progesterone, pregnenolone. And pregnenolone deficiency can actually lead to MS. It may be a useful treatment to get the symptoms under better control. So you take pregnenolone, which is available in this country very cheaply. In Europe, it's illegal as an anabolic steroid. Here, you can just go to the vitamin store and get it. But I would hope you'd get it from me. And so what it does is it settles down the neuritis. Very interesting stuff. Huh. You know, what else is, is, is pregnenolone useful for? It's also useful to, uh, to treat the symptoms of dementia. So we use a we use a bunch of it in the office, as it turns out. But MS, Iggy, yes, you can you can see optic neuritis. You can also see issues of uh, diplopia, double vision, and whatnot. Good work, Iggy. Nicely done there, bro. Thanks for helping out, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. We can bro- always count on Iggy in a pinch. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, uh, we we broadcast on social media, of course, all the platforms. Just look for a Connection Show. Hashtag Lizzie said what? What have you been doing? Yeah, over like there? us on Periscope. Yeah. Where's that Facebook? It's both. Oh, was it really? Oh, all the Paris, that was good. Twitch, we're on all that. Like that? Lizzie's got a new job at the Universal now. Yes, oh, I really? Do. New attraction. What are you doing? I'm at Shrek. Shrek. Oh, she's at Shrek or with Shrek? Well, both. She, there you she, go. Her husband is Shrek. So yeah, it's yeah, you don't mess. Yeah, if, if, if you're gonna mess, mess with, with uh, if you're gonna mess with Shrek, you do it once. Yeah, once. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. It's connections. Connections is Relationship Radio. Why, yes it is. You don't know me, but my name is Mr. Big. That used to be my name. That Icky to infinity. Stop it, Icky. That was it. Oh, thanks, Doug. Is that my new nickname? New nickname? What your 
Uh, uh-huh. Mr. Big is pleased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Big. Jackie is uh, checking in on her social media. <laughs> Welcome back to Connections. Uh, she says, I'm one of your patients, Doc. I have Graves' disease. She's just one of the three. I know. The 15. A hundred. I had the bulging eye at the height of my Graves' disease. That's what. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. It, it, and sometimes, sometimes it gets better. Sometimes it may ease up on one side, mm-hmm. and sometimes it stays the same. Yeah. I, I mean, even when I was a kid, I, when I noticed someone whose eyes seemed to be popping out of their mm-hmm. head, I'm like, "There's something not right there." Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, but there are also certain ethnic groups where it, it can happen. Well, now, what about the yellowed, uh, and when you speak of ethnic groups, the yellowed eye where it, everything seems to be hardened on the outside, not the iris or the pupil, but the, the whites of the eyes actually. Get, getting yellowish? Turn yeah. yellow. Okay. There, there's, there are, are disorders of lipid that will deposit uh, ectopically throughout the brain, or brain throughout the uh, skin and whatnot. So sometimes okay. you'll see these little um, bumps and whatnot under the eye also on the mm-hmm. skin. Okay, you'll, as people get age, um, get some age on them, you'll see it. But the yellowing of the, of the sclera, the white of the eyes, okay, can happen very, very commonly with something called Gilbert syndrome. Mm. You may know it as Gilbert. Okay, G-I-L-B-E-R-T. You might know it as a side effect of the COVID vaccine. Yes. Okay. So what happens is there are individuals, oh yeah, there are individuals Shocker, who have things. a difficult time with bilirubin. And so you can come down with influenza, your eyes will turn yellow. You come down with, um, you know, some type of uh, injury or whatever. Your eyes turn yellow, oh. just ever so tinged. And, and people think that there's something wrong with your liver. You go into the emergency room. And they they run a bilirubin Panic. on you, mm-hmm. and then ah, oh, the bilirubin's elevated. You have a liver disease. You have liver enzyme issues. Oh, no, really? yeah, Gilbert syndrome, and it's one of those sorts of things that you want to know it if you have it. Again, it's a fifteen dollar lab test, and. You want to know it. You want it in your medical records. It may save you from a liver biopsy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, truly, it's kind really of interesting. Don't need to be cutting into you if they don't. Yeah, you need want to punch biopsy your liver. I can't think of anything oh, I'd rather not do on a weekend. Pass on that. Yeah, especially in July. Right. Oh, by the way, <laughs> July is the worst time to get into trauma. Worst time to end up in the hospital because this is when all the new residents are running around trying to do things and learn what the, you know. So I think you need a pacemaker. Did you not you know don't want to hear that. No, you do not want to hear that. Still out of the schools, you know, and July first. Oh, yeah. makes sense. Oh yeah. Oh, do not God. get sick in July. <laughs> now, okay. If, now, if you've been diagnosed or you have a family member who's diagnosed with the macular degenerative eye disease, yes. Um, there's these words that they'll throw around called wet and dry. Wet and dry. Yes. Wet and dry macular degeneration. Yes. It has to do with whether or not you see these exudates, these things that are coming out in quantity out of the um, ret- the arteries, basically, right oh. there at the macula. Yeah, my dad had wet. Yeah, and that's usually a worse problem. Mm. So yeah, they expect him to go blind like about a year or two afterwards, but he, he basically, when I went through all your, your uh, medications that you have on stages of life, um, yep. is... A lot of the stuff that his doctor told him to take for right. his eyes. Yeah, did you, you see? You offer that? Well, no kidding. There's a product. What's the product? There's a product. There's a product. Tell me about there's, it. The what? one you want to look at, okay, is called MacuShield Two. Now, MacuShield Two. If you if you uh, get a look at it, look mm-hmm. at the ingredients in it, and then compare it to the stuff that your ophthalmologist okay. is hawking in their office. Yes. And what you're going to find is that the daily dose on that is about ten times what you're getting through the other products. And the price is less. Yes, it, it really is. Significantly less. Mm-hmm. Very so much. we manufacture that stuff and Stages we really do. We sell the hell of out of it. LifeVitamins.com. MacuShield 2. LifeVitamins.com. MacuShield 2 is what we're talking Good about. Business. Yeah, it's all the products that we reference you can find on stages of life. Vitamins.com because, well, the doc's got it going on. So, um, well, why not? So, if, 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 you, if you go someplace, you, you go to, to uh, let's say, a, a, a pharmacy down the street, mm-hmm. okay, and on the shelf they have a bottle. Well, you take one of these tablets a day and it's $60 a month. You, can, you cannot cram what you need in that's, adequate amounts to make it worthwhile. That's, so, the, that's a good point because I remember my dad had like four different types that his eye doctor, and you have it all in, in this one. one bottle. Yeah, it's, it wasn't by mistake. And so, you know, do all you have to take six capsules a day? You bet. Yeah. Okay, that's just the way it's going to go. Four to six is, is really what it's going to take mm-hmm. to make it work because you have to take a particular medicine, mm-hmm. a partic- whether it's prescription or not, but then you have this thing called amount, okay? Uh, so you can put a dash sense. of this and a dash of that, but if it calls for a cup of flour, a dash will not do. Mm. And that's the way these things work. 
Yeah, we were talking about, you remember back when mom forgot to have milk in the house and you made the um, Kraft <laughs> macaroni and cheese with water? No, yeah. just added, oh, it worked. added extra butter. <laughs> and that's like, it works, but it doesn't so it's taste not, quite right. Yeah, it doesn't look so great. And, yeah. yeah. Kinda. Yeah, why don't you make your cocoa with that, 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 that powdered milk stuff? It's gross. We're going to put a little cream aura in there. Really <laughs> make you good and sick. Right. Seriously. So we never talked about laser guy vision, uh, corrective surgery. Any no. Of that, which we, you why know, would we? Why would we? Exactly. It has nothing to do with degeneration. It nope. simply has to do with visual correction. If we want to do that, if somebody wants us to talk about LASIK, I can talk all day long about LASIK. Sure. We both have had it. No, I, not only that, but I, I actually helped fund the, the, mm -hmm. the, the uh, LASIK uh, machine that was developed here in Orlando, as it turns out. Yeah. My, yeah. I mean, I have a family member who's president of the company. So what do you <laughs> feel about eye drops? Depends on what you're putting in your eye. Exactly. Yeah, don't don't just put any old thing in your eye. The the deal with eye drops, okay. One, okay, mm. they need to be kept very very clean. Most people don't wash their hands after they go to the bathroom, yeah. let alone clean that eye dropper or keep it clean. So you go ahead and get an infection in your eye, and it's going to make a believer of you. You will you will never see things exactly the same way if you get the drift. <laughs> I, I am I'm more convinced that the hot wing finger is my favorite. No, actually, the jalapeno <laughs> finger is best. Well, same difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. I've had both, well, and I'll tell I, you I what. I like them pretty hot. So yeah, my, my point is, you can wash your hands like three times, and then rub your eye, and that's going to be a twenty minute experience. Yeah. You'll never or if try that while you're driving, because yeah, I yeah. did that one time. Whee! Yeah. Or, or if you try using your air fryer you just bought and you uh, decide to do to air fry the jalapeno poppers, but just the actual jalapeno Ooh, part. Oh, even better. And in the whole house for hours and your eyes are burning. You're just like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Okay, I'll raise you. I tear gassed myself one time. Yeah, <laughs> you well, win. yeah, I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> you went on that I one. I did the tear gas. No, no. Too, when the military well, did it, yeah. I was being paid to do it. Yeah, when oh I tear gassed gosh, myself, it's because it's because the tear gas pen went off. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, with these things work oh. right exactly <laughs> right into the, right into the wind. It came back, hit me in the face. Oh, yeah, I man. learned a lesson about about tear gas pens. Learned. I think, well, yes. I better practice with this. <laughs> you know, in case, in case I need to use it. it the trick to practice is not to discharge your weapon and, 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 and you know either at you or somebody else. Eye exams, uh, what, uh, once a year? Annually. Okay. Annually is usually good enough. Now, if you've got somebody that has active disease of some other type, mm -hmm. things like glaucoma in particular, but it, you know it could be um, autoimmune disorders. You know, you're going to be a setup for other issues. So you only have two eyes. Mm. So you know, what? going to an ophthalmologist. Okay, to be checked eyes. out is a really to? good idea. So you're looking for an eye doctor with an MD after their name once a year, going to an optometrist, OD. They, they're good people. They do a great job. But you need to see a doctor at least once a year. Uh, that is, and on that note, we like to see you at least every other week. So. Yes, there you please. go. Dr. David Klein from Stages of Life Medical Institute right here in Longwood, Florida. Stages of Life MedicalInstitute.com. Hey, it's time for us to go, so everybody say goodbye. Good night. Good night. Nice. <laughs> 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 Laughing time is over. There you have it, boys. Case closed. You've been listening to Connections. Find tonight's show and replays of our past shows on ConnectionsShow.com. If you're